This video introduces autoregressive integrated moving average models or ARIMA in short. By the end of this video you will understand how to use the autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation functions to identify ARIMA models. First let us have a look at ARIMA models. We have covered autoregressive processes of order 1 or AR1 in short in the video on data generating processes. I can write an AR1 process as follows. Epsilon t is a white noise error term. We can generalize this process by permitting more lags which yields an ARP process. Now a moving average refers to lagged error terms. For instance, an MA1 process can be written as follows. Again, we can generalize by permitting Q lags which yields an MAQ process. Finally, moving average and autoregressive components can be combined resulting in an ARIMA model. How do we know whether the time series we observe was generated by an autoregressive or moving average process? And how can we determine the number of lags? We have two tools that reveal the underlying data generating process. The autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. The autocorrelation function explores the correlations between the current realization of a time series and its past values. The partial autocorrelation function seems to do similar things, but it isolates the partial impact of past values. It is a bit like taking a partial derivative, controlling for the effects of all other lags. To see these two tools in action, we go into starter. We start with a do file developed for data generating processes. The idea is to simulate an AR1 process and um, an MA1 process. Then calculate the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function for both processes and observe the differences. Let me just copy paste the code and modify to obtain the two processes. Again all the code is available on GitHub. The link is down below in the description. Now first I create the AR1 process. So after creating the AR1 process we um, obtain the MI1 process by modifying this copy pasted code. I just use here the lect error term and I select um, 0.7 as a coefficient. I also note that I don't have to um, regenerate observations or the time dimension because that already has been achieved. Let's explore the autocorrelation function or ACF in short. The command is AC and then the name of my time series. I observe a spike around 0.8 and a very slow decay. And this is for the autoregressive process of order 1. For the moving average of order 1, I see one isolated spike and an immediate drop. Hence, the ACF can identify the leg structure of the moving average process. Let's explore the partial autocorrelation function or PACF in short. The command is simply PAC. Now in the case of the AR1 process you see one sharp spike with a value of 0.8 and then a sudden drop. So the partial autocorrelation function can identify the leg structure of the autoregressive process. In case of the moving average of order 1, we see a spike around 0.5, a bit lower than that, followed by oscillation. 
and a decay. Using the core gram command, we can compare both functions. Using the option lex, I can restrict it to um, 10 lex, which is more than sufficient. So again, we see and can compare the outcome for the autoregressive process of order one. We have a spike isolated in the partial autocorrelation function, which identifies the lag structure. Now for the moving average, we obtain a spike in the autocorrelation function, and in the partial autocorrelation function, we see oscillation. So using the autocorrelation function, the lag order can be identified. Sorry. Yes, ma'am, you do not have to watch any more. Um, everyone, anyway, already left. So you can stop watching. Thank you for watching. No, um, ma'am, it's, it's YouTube. Uh, it's not the one daddy watches. No, it's different. It's different. Okay, it's different. It's tube. It's the tube. It's YouTube, not the other one. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah.